Hey, what's up, y'all? We're back with another Zero Hour. It is Recap and Reactions Day as we are coming off of Aries 13. Went down this past Friday night from the world-famous Cotton Eye Joe Knoxville, Tennessee. Tim Lloyd, Jeff Hobbs. Uh, we are uh, going to recap our final show of the year. Jeff, this is uh, one year. We're just a little over a year in, I guess, now. But the final show for 2022, getting ready for a big 2023. And, uh, of course, still got the underground we'll talk about here in the coming weeks for December. But as far as Aries proper goes, 2022 uh, is in the books. Yeah, uh, October was uh, the one year mark, but as far as like a full calendar year saying uh, uh, 2022 is over, this is uh, Aries 13 kind of wrapped up uh, everything with a nice little bow on it. And like I said, we got uh, got a little underground action, uh, going to support uh, the Nashville Cats here in a few weeks, uh, a little over a month, um, and then we'll be ready to rock right, right, right back, rock and roll again in uh, January. Before we dive into it, do us a favor out there, give us a, uh, a like and a subscribe to the channel here. And if you would, you'll get notified every time we post new content. I guess we'll be posting Chattanooga Fight Night videos uh, a little bit later in the week. So make sure you subscribe. You'll get notified when we put that stuff up. And then we'll put the videos up from uh, the show we're about to recap here in about two weeks. Let's get into it. Uh, of course, uh, we had uh, 14 bouts. We'll kind of run through uh, you know the, the prelims quickly. Uh, the uh, the first bout on the on the prelims that tag team combat BJJ for the first time it was Logan Neal in a gate line from Agogi getting the win over uh, Rowan Wrestling Academy's Corey Henson and Noah Basinger. Uh, this was we kind of at the last minute we're like, well, what do we do if these guys start getting TKO'd out there? So the you know typically we we race to three in in these uh, tag team bouts but uh we we decided that if there was a tko then the opponent or the person that got tko would be out of the match so we had two straight tkos so essentially we were done at two points for the agogi team uh, and then uh that was at five minutes 30 seconds and then uh, our other combat bjj bout female action featherweights melissa buckner also of agogi gets the win over hannah ellswick with a knee bar four minutes 38 seconds in Jeff, your take on these two? A lot of slapping in the first one. It's almost like, I mean, it was really, there weren't a lot of, of jujitsu uh, techniques. There was, these guys were looking to just slap the shit out of each other. Yeah. Um, you know, we got some skilled guys in the, in the cage for this one, but um, skill went out the door. They were in there to beat the shit out of each other. Um, it was uh, definitely the most brutal uh, <laughs> edition of combat BJJ that we've had. Um, a, a lot of positions, you know, little kind of crucifix type positions where it was just uh, nonstop open palms, uh, whether it was the face was open or the belly, even at one point, yeah. uh, it was, uh, I'm telling you, it was, uh, it was brutal. Man. It was, uh, it was, it was uh, tough to watch for a second. So uh, I knew though, when we, when we posed the question of, holy shit, what do we do with TKOs and tag team? Uh, then it was going to happen, and, and it did. Um, but uh, I don't know, man. I mean, it was fun. It was fun as hell, uh, as always. I don't know that it uh, invited a lot of people to, to step in there with the uh, Logan Neal and Gateline team. Right. Um, but, man, it, it was a blast, man. I, I, the corners were having a blast during this one. Uh, I think the uh, you know, the crowd was definitely entertained, so uh, it, it did its job. Uh, Melissa Buckner looked really well in, in her uh, combat BJJ outing. Um, you know, she was new to us, uh, it, not just promotion wise, but I, we'd never really, you know, come across her, met her before. Yeah. So um, uh, it was really uh, cool to get some new blood in there, and uh, she did really, really well. And again, Hannah Ellswick is a is a, uh, a vet, a savvy uh, vet who has seen and done it all in this sport. So um, it was definitely a good uh, pickup for Miss Buckner. Uh, Hannah messaged me a little bit later in the evening, said her and Samantha Buttery want to do a tag team female bout. So we have to uh, get a Gogi uh, team to, to take them on. Maybe uh, maybe Melissa and Jazzy would be fun uh, to do something like that. Uh, moving on, the rest of the prelims. We had three Muay Thai bouts. These all went to decisions, actually. We had uh, lightweight, 155 pounds. Joel Aldridge from Sakam Muay Thai moves to two and one after a unanimous decision win over Rowan Wrestling Academy's Noah Lewitt. Um, all the judges had it for Joel Aldridge. Looks like two had it three to one 
and then Lisa Dorn had it two. To, uh, I'm sorry, three to nothing for uh, for two judges and two to one from from Lisa Doran. Um, and then it was Jake Phillips from High Stand and David West uh, from Black Eye Movie Tie going at it. Those guys had a lot of experience between them. They put on a really really nice fight. Very technical, very skilled. Uh, Jake Phillips gets the win unanimous decision, moves to seven and four. David West drops to four and two. And uh, in this one, uh, Johnny Stewart had it all three rounds for Jake Phillips. Both Lisa Duran and Chandler Goins had it two to one for Jake Phillips. Rounding out the uh, prelims catchweight battle, had 160 pounds. Andre Stevens of Striker Fight Center gets the win over Harrison Raymond from Shield Systems. Both these guys came in undefeated. It was a majority decision um, for Andre Stevens here. Uh, Johnny Stewart and uh, Lisa Duran both had it for... Uh, Stevens, Chandler Goins had it a draw. That's how I had it myself. Um, and this also, Jeff got um, the uh, Fight of the Night uh, award. Uh, so, uh, your take on these, uh, these, uh, these time out? Uh, any issues with the decision in the last one? I think the first two were fairly good. Yeah, uh, these were actually really, really good fights, uh, really competitive fights. All three of them were. Um, like I said, a lot of experience with uh, West and Phillips, and, and it absolutely showed. And uh, Stevens Raymond, while both were undefeated, they were still kind of you know young in their careers, one and zero and two and zero. But man, they um, they looked like uh, veterans in there. Um, it definitely was deserving a fight of the night. I think it was a no brainer for for a lot of us that witnessed the fight. I mean, the fact that one one judge had it a draw shows you how close that it that it was. Uh, Harrison Raymond, we ain't seen, we haven't seen him in a while. Um, he was in such good spirits, um, you know, from the time he arrived, he was ready to put on a show, and, and he did, regardless of the outcome. Uh, he put on a show, but Andre Stevens, at just one fight in, um, you know, was so poised and and together in this fight. Um, it, it's tough when you kind of go into someone else's backyard. The crowd was definitely pro Harrison <laughs> Raymond. Um, and uh, Stevens was able to just block it all out and stay the course and put on a hell of a performance. Uh, Weston Phillips, like I said, really, really uh, close fight there. Um, it was, it was, uh, it was really beautiful to kind of watch two guys that just really take, uh, you know, Muay Thai seriously to get in there. They're not doing it just to, you know, uh, uh, do something in between MMA fights. Like this is their skill set and this is what they love to do. And, and it shows when you put two people like that in the, uh, in the arena together. Uh, and, and Lou and Aldridge, it was a good, uh, good Muay Thai start to the show. Um, both those guys, you know, look good. Uh, you know, I hate to, to say that sometimes these Muay Thai fights are fillers because that's never really the intent. Um, but you do get a lot of guys that, like we were saying, are MMA guys that are just looking to do something uh, to have three such solid uh, Muay Thai fights back to back to back on a card that delivered the way these three did is is an anomaly. Um, but this was these were definitely not uh, filler fights or hey uh, Tim, let me just do something while we're waiting for my next MMA fight. Uh, these guys were very skilled and it showed all six of them. Moving on to the undercard amateur MMA portion of the card. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll knock these out, I guess, two at a time. Uh, we had the, uh, a catch weight up first, uh, 100, 150 pounds. It was Brendan Kelly from the Ultimate Ninja, his own Ultimate Ninja uh, gym in Lexington, Kentucky. Moves to 2-0 and as he gets a 12-second TKO win over Chris Hendrick, who falls to 0-3 now. Um, two seconds off the record there. That was uh, uh, 10 seconds is the fastest KO uh, for us in our, our brief history, but... Uh, that's a, a very close second for Brendan Kelly. And then uh, we had a, a late replacement here in the next battle. that was supposed to be uh, Trevor Parker from Carlson Gracie making his debut against Preston Harcourt. Harcourt pulled out on fight week and Chase Chandler stepped in on very short notice. So Chase is a super heavyweight, so props to both these guys for kind of rolling with the punches. Trevor going up and giving, I, gosh, about 60 pounds in weight to Chase Chandler. And then, of course, Chase taking on very short notice. And uh, it was Trevor Parker who got the win here, uh, two minutes and 21 seconds in by an arm bar finish. And uh, 
I thought that we did get to see a little bit better out of Chase Chandler than we got to see in his first fight, which ended kind of quickly with uh, Sean Morgan. So, you know, he got to show you know, he's a big, strong guy. He's, he's still kind of slimming up every time we see him. So uh, maybe he'll get on to uh, the regular heavyweight division before long. But all the same, always good to have new blood in the heavyweight division. Trevor Parker looked good out there. Yeah. Um, just because you mentioned Sean Morgan, I just saw today. It uh, looks like he have, has welcomed a little one into the family. Oh, nice. So congratulations, Sean, if you happen to catch this or watch it. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, Brennan Kelly, like you said, a new business owner. Uh, I think he had his uh, phones forwarded on, on fight weekend while he's there. Yeah. Cause I kept hearing him answer the phone, uh, the ultimate ninja, yeah. uh, uh, and taking business calls uh, while he was waiting on his fight. But, um, you know, Chris Hendrick, uh, it, it's kind of one of these weird situations where, yeah, the guy is uh, 0-3 now at this point, uh, where you have an 0-3 that you can honestly say that was looking better each time as far as more confident in himself. Um, you can tell his physicality is he's getting in better shape every time. If he, yes, absolutely. You know, the first time we saw him just kind of came in, uh, not really dressed to fight, if you will. Um uh, and every time he just looks more and more the part, you know, when he comes in, uh, making weight, hitting it, looking really good and in shape, um, and is carrying himself differently each time that he comes in. It's just, uh, you know, it just hasn't come together for him yet. Um, you know, he's been in there with some, some grapplers previously and, and been looking for an opportunity to kind of maybe stand up with someone and then, uh, he got that in, in Brendan <laughs> Kelly, um, who I think also was, you know, in his own right, trying to showcase, you know, some stand up. Uh, his first time out, uh, you know, was a was quite a little war that he had, mm -hmm. uh, an exhausting, uh, you know, grappling match almost. With so he was looking to kind of show something too. Um, this was probably one of the nastiest little knockdown, fall down kind of <laughs> things, kind of a sideways. Uh, fall down, but I, I think some of that was off balance too, because, uh, you know, Chris, uh, Hendrick was able to pop right back up and, and, uh, you know, thank goodness, nothing was, uh, terribly wrong with them. Uh, the heavyweight fight, man, how many times are you ever going to say that you put on a super heavyweight bout that, uh, was more of a grappling, uh, bout and ended with an arm bar submission? Yeah. That one is definitely for the record books. Uh, you know, you you can see it and you know it's like, okay, I mean, it's there if he were to, but you never really expect him to take it. And uh, he got his opportunity and he saw the arm was there. And by God, he super heavyweight took it. And uh, uh, it is definitely an anomaly. And it was fun for the crowd. But th definitely thank you to Chase Chandler for jumping in on such short notice uh, and, and helping save a fight here. Up next, lightweight action. Blake Grant gets a, a win in his debut, uh, representing Guardian MMA out in Murfreesboro. He moves to 1-0 and with a uh, first-round rear naked choke over Ricardo Powell from ground and pound. Uh, Ricardo goes to 1-1 one and one now. That was 2 minutes 48 seconds in. Uh, Grant also took home the uh, National Guard Warrior of the Night Award. Really nice showing there for uh, for Blake Grant in his debut. And then uh, up next, it was Bantamweights as uh, Nick Golden from Rowan Wrestling Academy, uh, their first uh, gets the first win uh, for Rowan Wrestling Academy um, as he gets uh, uh, TKO 42 seconds into the first round over Tyler Huff from Carlson Gracie. So Carlson Gracie goes one and one on the night. Um, yeah, Golden looks really put together at 135. That guy's you know he's he's shredded up. He's a he's a thick dude. Obviously he's got some wrestling, but it was the striking on display here against Huff. I guess there was maybe some kind of little. Maybe like an ankle or a foot uh, was was maybe injured at some point uh, there in the last scramble. I, I'm not really sure. I tried to watch and see for, for what had happened. I couldn't mm -hmm. really tell. But uh, all the same, congrats to Nick Golden and congrats to Rowan Wrestling Academy getting that first dub. Yeah. I mean, Rowan Wrestling, obviously, uh, you know, they had, a, they had a tough night as far as, you know, tough opponents, <coughs> tough competition, um, and were able to uh, uh, pull this one out for the team. Um Blake Grant looked looked phenomenal. Uh, very impressed when someone makes their debut, and you can see that uh, they've got a huge you know following that uh, made that trip to Knoxville 
to support him. So that always just tells me that somebody's doing something right. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of history in the cage, obviously making his debut. So uh, he, he must be doing something right personally, character wise, um, to have that much support. So it was really uh, cool to see him not only perform, but like you said, uh, uh, take home a new uh, Tennessee National Guard Armory uh, Award that they are wanting to start doing each and every show. And that is um, them getting together, the recruiters there that are on hand, and uh, getting a warrior of the night, someone who just showed exceptional uh, heart, uh, grit, um, you know, it displayed all the uh, attributes that uh, the Army looks for in soldiers, and they immediately, uh, after Blake Grant uh, stepped out of the cage, said, that's our guy. That's our guy for the night. So it's a really cool-looking award, too, and uh, I can't wait to keep giving those out uh, each and every show. Um, but uh, Ricardo Powell, just one and one, uh, still so much upside with that cat, man. Uh, I'm excited. It's so easy to work with, too. Yep. Um, yeah, and, and excited to see him again, uh, as well as uh, Tyler Huff. All right. Rounding out the uh, preliminary card, or, uh, or I guess an undercard, um, amateur main event, 145 pounds. It was Brivin Sullivan from Agogi Combatives moving to 5-0 and oh now as he gets a round one knockout by a head kick 43 seconds in over Michael Cribb out of Fight Force Fitness, Team Sean Hammonds. Uh, Cribb drops to four and three. This was uh, the most experienced opponent that Bribbon has had, yet he dispatched of him fairly easily and gets uh, and gets the uh, knockout of the night at the, while, while he was at it. Got some swag to go with it, and uh, Bribbon rounds out the amateur portion of the card with uh, in style there with a big knockout with a head kick. Yep. Uh, you know, Brivin um, obviously watches the show and um, immediately came and found me and asked me if uh, I've answered any of the questions yet. And, um, and, and I think he has, um, you know, answered those questions. Like you said, Michael Cribb was the most experienced guy, I think, that uh, Brivin had, had met to this point. Um, but I think a lot of a lot of this stuff with Brivin has to do with Brivin, you know, and it's it's how he approaches the fight What he, when he comes out like that. Um, he does answer a lot of questions. He came out aggressive. He came out crisp. Everything he threw was hard. And uh, everything he threw seemed like he was looking to end the fight with everything. Uh, and that's the type of ribbon that, um, you know, I wanted to see. Um, I still think there are levels that he can still, you know, get to it, as far as the opponent is is concerned. Uh, Michael Cribb had been out for a while. And, again, this is no knock on, on Brivin. Um, I just think there's still – uh, some opponents out there, and I, hell, I don't know them off the hand. I'm just saying I, I trust that you'd be able to find them, Tim. Uh, but uh, I, I think there's still uh, levels of opponents we can see before Brivin decides, you know, to, to make that jump to a professional, you know, ranks. Um, but yeah, I mean, Brivin answered all the questions that he needed to in this one. I think when when this Brivin steps in the cage, the sky's the limit for this kid because when he comes in that focused and that um, determined and uh, just everything was just laser point the other night. And that's not to say that Michael Cribb didn't look good because Michael Cribb was calm. He was collected. He was, he was measured in, in his approach. I mean, for a minute there, he, everything that Brivin was giving him, he was trying to give right back to him, you know, some of the good body kicks and things like that. Uh, he, but it was just, it was too overwhelming for him at some point. And uh, it was a beautifully placed high kick right across the jaw, right across the face, right across the jaw, as perfectly placed as possible. And it was just that kind of one hit or quitter dropped him. Uh, referee, you know, rightly and gladly stopped, uh, stepped in and stopped the bout from, uh, you know, going any further and possibly, you know, doing any more damage. So um, it was really good, uh, really good way to uh, put an exclamation point on the uh, amateur side of the card and an exclamation point on the victory for Brivin. Interesting fight could be just the lazy matchmaking here with Brendan Kelly now 2-0, uh, you know, in that featherweight division, a guy that would probably measure up as the most athletic guy that Brivin would have faced up to this point. Don't know if he's got the ground chops to, to test him there, but uh, obviously good hands and, uh, and uh, good athleticism. All right, let's move on to uh, the main card. We've got professional action here. 
And uh, it was a catch weight at 150 pounds, leading us off. Corey Delaney out of Team Chaos, Columbus, Ohio, moves to four and eight now with a first round TKO win over Rowan Wrestling Academy's Justin Watson, who falls to zero and two. And uh, like props to both these guys uh, again for rolling with the punches. These guys were supposed to fight other people. Corey Delaney is supposed to fight Carter Beatman. Justin Watson is supposed to fight Daniel Kilburn. Both those guys. Unable to get their shit together on five week. And so, uh, you know, they rolled with the punches, took a different fight. Corey Delaney had to cut a little bit more weight. Uh, and Justin had to take a matchup that was not uh, nearly as as favorable to him as his original situation. Obviously, a lot more experience from Corey Delaney. And then just size-wise, you know, Corey's a, really a 55-er um, that can make 150. <laughs> and, uh, and Justin's a guy that probably needs to be at 135 if he's got, uh, you know, uh, if he's got an, uh, the proper time to make it, but I mean, he walks it under one 155 or 150 even as it is. So, um, you know, quick takedown from, uh, from Corey. And then it was a uh, fillet of elbows from there and uh, gets Justin out of there just under a minute. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously props to both these guys for stepping in and making, uh, you know, something out of nothing. Uh as Brock said, chicken salad out of chicken shit. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, the, the show was going to lose two fights. These fighters were going to lose two opportunities um, at, at, you know, getting a possible win and payday for their families and things like that. So props to both of them for uh, uh, helping put this puzzle together and, and both guys compete. But like you said, uh, at the end of the day, Corey Delaney, you know, 10 plus fight, you know, ex experience and Justin Watson, uh, just making his debut last year in Nashville um, against a tough as hell Pat Crumpton of, of all people too. Um, so the guys, you know, had no favors given to him. That's for sure. Um, but, uh, you know, Corey Delaney looked good. I mean, Corey Delaney has also been in there, you know, with some really tough guys over the years and, you know, unfortunately hasn't come out on the right side of that and, and hasn't really gotten to showcase his skill set. And I think Corey did a really good job of not just going in, you know, to get the win, so to speak. I mean, he went in and he had a game plan and he went in and utilized elbows. He utilized uh, everything that, you know, presented itself to us and had a really nice complete win there. And uh, it was a little brutal, too. You know, yeah. he was able to, uh, like I said, take advantage of some elbows and, uh, and and slice Justin up and, and uh, introduce some, some blood, some red to the crowd uh, for the night. And so, you know, congratulations to Corey Delaney. I mean, I, I, I hope and pray that, uh, you know, the next time we get Justin Watson in the cage, uh, he's got an opponent that will see it through. Uh, when the time has been put in, you know, to match make someone uh, as closely and fairly as possible, uh, that the opponent sees it through, and Justin gets, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, the the fair matchup that that he deserves at this point. Um, but um, you know, congrats to uh, Corey Delaney, and you know what? Congrats to Justin Watson. He had a great crowd there uh, to support him, and that was because he pushed the hell out of it, pushed the hell out of the show, and. Uh, you know, appreciate uh, every bit of that. The blood flow did not stop there as our feature bout up next had plenty of it. And it was uh, another catchweight bout, 150 pounds. Uh, and it was Andrew Sturdivant from Go Ethan Batters making his professional debut against Titus Moore from Jim O, also making his professional debut. Uh, again, props to both these guys for rolling with the punches. It was supposed to be uh, a different opponent for Andrew Sturdivant, and um, it ended up being Titus Moore on about a week's notice. Um, he had to really scramble to get medicals in and all that stuff. Just uh, really, really great to work with. And, man, he's he's – Quite the fighter. I mean, I was very impressed with with Titus Moore here. Is um, you know the you know I watched it back and the and watching it live, I thought that the first round um, was pretty close, but I was leaning Titus Moore's way. And then after and then watching it on uh, replay, I I kind of still still feel that way. Um, second round uh, with control time, I had Titus Moore as well. So, you know, the uh, Sturdivant's back was against the wall going into that third round. Uh, it felt like there was some urgency in the corner. They you need to get a finish. They, I don't think they were trying to fool him into thinking he was ahead on the scorecards. And uh, and and he really came out guns blazing that third round. Got the takedown, uh, slipped a, a nasty little elbow through that, that cut Titus and uh, maintained position until about the 
um, I guess we were about three minutes in, and uh, Chris Vaughn at that point stood them up, and we got a little bit of a, a lull in the action, so Dr. Nathan Elliott could, could check out that cut. And um, I think that at the time, I think we were all kind of assuming the fight was going to continue <laughs> at that point. Um, because I mean, it's gotta be a pretty good cut for Dr. Elliott to, to, to step in and, 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 you know, overrule anything, but, um, uh, but he did. And, uh, the, he called it, um, he called the fight at that point. It was a TKO cut stoppage victory for Andrew Sturdivant, who I'm sure, um, is happy to get out of there with a win. And, um, at the same time, I think there's a lot that he can take from this when it seemed like there were, you know, his, his mind was was in the right place afterward that he realized that that wasn't necessarily, you know, his best performance, but he, he escaped with the win and, uh, you know, still has that mindset that he's got some things to improve on. Titus Moore, a guy that I, I definitely want to see back again. He was great to work with and, um, going to be a handful, um, you know, for anybody really that, that was a fight that just slipped through his fingers. I know he was very disappointed. Yeah, definitely. And then it's that, you know, warrior mentality, you know, he was just, he felt, you know, I could hear him, you know, pleading with the doctor, please let me continue. You know, we've gone this far. Um, and like you said, I don't think there's really probably too many people that would argue that he was up two rounds to nothing on the scorecards at that point. Um, and in his mind, all he had to do was just weather the storm in round three. And he felt like he could trust the judge's scorecards to still walk out of there with the victory. Um, you know, at the end of the day, kind of a great position for Andrew Sturdivant when, uh, you can learn so much about yourself in your pro debut uh, and still walk away with, uh, you know, a W on your on your record uh, and know that, you know, there's just a lot of things that you, you know, might want to fix and need to fix before you head into your next bout. But it also just pays dividends to know that you were in there that tough in your pro debut. We had saw that, uh, you know, months back with Abamai and Austin Carter, you know, for to have two guys in, in a hell of a match like that for their pro debut. Um, you know, we could tell at that point whoever won that fight was going to go on and be better in their sophomore outing because of that fight. And I think this will be the same thing for Andrew Sturdivant. I think this type of just grueling and gritty battle in war is only going to benefit him, you know, his second time out. But, uh, you know, like you said, the blood was a flowing and puddling at this point. Uh, I didn't see it, it as an elbow. I know you watched it back a little closer than I have, Tim, uh, but I knew it was either an elbow or he was really giving these nice short hammer fists too. Um, but uh, the positioning of the cut was just kind of right here, straight up and down on the eyebrow, uh, but it was right over the corner of the eye. So everything that was coming off of it was you know, going straight in the eye. And had the doctor even decided to let it go, uh, the referee was going to put him back in that same position. So um, it was going to continue to flow in his eye, uh, possibly for another two minutes. Um, but, man, uh, like I said, Titus Moore, that Jimmo, that Gastonia crew, uh, so awesome to work with. Uh, uh, Titus stayed and hung out, you know, for a while after after the show came out into the parking lot and, you know, thanked us again, talked to super guy, uh, super family, too, that, that traveled to watch him uh, perform. Yeah, his mom was there. Uh, so uh, definitely hope that we get to see uh, him again. I know this was a catchweight, uh, Tim, at 150 because of the short notice, but I'm going to guess Titus 145 usually naturally, mm -hmm. so. Um, man, are there some there's some fights there for sure uh, at 145 that it would be awesome to see. And I know Sturdivant, uh, like you said, he was happy to walk away with a win, but I think he was really, really realistic about the fight. Um, I don't think he lied to himself in any way about some of the things he could have done differently. And I imagine he's going to want to get in fairly quickly and um, and. Uh, and show us a different Andrew Sturdivant as well, a, a better Andrew Sturdivant. And I don't want to take anything away from Andrew's performance, honestly, because he still no. did better than, like, he was in some really bad spots in the first round. Uh, you know, we thought that rear naked choke that, that Titus is working from his back for oh, like yeah. a minute, you know, um, a, a, a lot of guys would have folded to that. You his know, poise and, was, his poise was beyond his years as far as time in the cage uh, in that first round. Uh, I, like you said, any any lesser a fighter, lesser trained fighter, uh, fighter from a lesser gym, all those things combined would have probably folded under that kind of pressure 
and and uh, not fought the way he did uh, to not just sustain and fight off the submission, but but actually you know put himself in better position in those instances and try to you know actually turn on him. You know, so I mean, yeah, absolutely nothing to take away from him because regardless of whether he lost the first round or not or lost the second round, uh, the positions that he fought out of and uh, and, and stayed so composed were uh, were phenomenal. Co-main event, lightweight bout, 155 pounds. Nick Campbell from the UFC gym in Greenville, South Carolina, moves to one and one with a big win over the debuting Chance Gilbride out of a gogi. First round, TKO, three minutes, 58 seconds in. This is a circus here. This is a wild one. Uh, it was, uh, <laughs> you know, Chance came in, uh, you know, a house of fire, very intense, you know, drawing the line in the middle of the cage. Uh, there was, you know, just a, just a, just fired up, man, just in a different zone. Uh, Campbell, very composed through all that, um, just kind of, you know, shrugged his shoulders and, and went to work out there. And, uh, you know, Chance, uh, early in the fight, I thought that, uh, you know, he, he was tenacious with his takedowns. I mean, he is like a bulldog. If he gets a hold of your, of your foot or your leg or your arm, he's, he's not going to let go until he drags you down. And, and he was able to drag Nick down, and he did have some real nice positions for the first couple of minutes. But then about two minutes in, it looked like Chance really started to fatigue very quickly. Um, you you kind of saw the the juice just, like, visibly, like, zap out of him. And at that point, uh, Nick Campbell, you know, took over. And Nick Campbell uh, actually had his back for uh, for a decent amount of time there late in the round, flattens him out. And, uh, and gets a TKO win. And what many would call an upset, I think, just with the pedigree that, that Chance brought to the table. Uh, there were some intangibles here, though. You know, Nick just has been more active while Chance has been on the shelf. Uh, and then the size. I mean, at 155, you know, Chance has made 135. And Nick is a large 155. And ultimately, I think, that, you know, trying to corral uh, Nick Campbell um, – Certainly didn't do Chance's gas tank uh, any favors there in the early portion of the round. Uh, Nick weathers a storm and, and gets a gets a nice win, man. Moves to one and one, and that's another guy that there's lots of good matchups for him out there. Yeah, I, you know, I think the um, you know you were talking about kind of the the pre fight um, antics that were going on, and I think we talked about it you know before the show was I think those were going to be the parts of this fight that uh, were going to make the difference, and that would be Nick Campbell not being phased at all by any of that, uh, not letting uh, Chance get in his head, not letting the moment get in his head. Like you said, it was more, you know, Chance came in, and trust me, this was not show. This is Chance being Chance. Chance is intense. Chance is, like you said, drawing lines in the sand, walking over, giving the double birds because he's tired of waiting on the ring announcer, um, uh, flying knees to the to the corner pads while he's waiting. Um, and you look across, though, and Nick Campbell is – almost ever so slightly just kind of shaking his head like what the hell is wrong with this dude? You know, kind of thing it, it didn't phase him one bit and he wasn't gonna fall uh, you know for the uh, intimidation uh, uh, antics again these aren't antics though this is just chance Gilbride being chance Gilbride he is just a very intense dude but uh, like you said the size difference um, you know, was, was and strength difference, I think, was evidence, uh, evident. Um, you know, Chance, we know, has made 35. Like you said, uh, Campbell's a good size 55, or let's not get it twisted, though. He's, he's He would definitely not be a, a, a 170 guy. This is his weight class. This is where he probably should be to be optimum. Um, but like you said, when Chance was coming in, just relentless on the takedown, um, uh, a lot of that power pushing the head down continuously, putting that 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 weight and that force pushing the head down. He was just so calm and collected about it, and stayed the course. Knew what he needed to do to wear on Chance, and uh, and uh, it's a hell of a win. Like you said, I think he was the underdog based on the fact one he's had an zero and one record. Uh, two, we know what kind of uh, grappling pedigree Chance had, but. Chance is a fighter, man. He's a gamer. He wanted to compete. He was so pumped and excited to be back in the gym and back fighting again. It didn't matter who was offered to him. Uh, he wanted to fight, and, and he, and in his mind, you know, he was going to win that fight regardless of size difference. But I think at the end of the day, uh, the size difference did have a lot to do with, you know, the outcome. That was a lot of force and a lot of weight and a lot of strength to be, uh, you know, carrying around for Chance and pushing down on him. And like you said, a time away from the cage, um, you know, 
I think it showed more, like you said, in his lungs than anything. Uh, when you had to give everything, every ounce of everything you had that soon in the fight to try to get a takedown, um, it just kind of blew his lungs out. And it was probably hard to come back after that. But that kid's going to be back, man. We know it. You, you're not getting rid of Chance Gilbride, that's for sure. Uh, and there are some some matchups at more of his natural weight that I think are tremendous that are out there. Um, you know, it's not easy to match make Chance uh, a lot. And, um, you know, but you never know after a fight like this. Maybe, it's, you know, somebody's going to look at this and see that, the, you know, maybe a, a means to an end and a blueprint there that might open up some more matchups that maybe before didn't. And if that's the case, then great for Aries fight series. Uh, we're able to make some, some more matchups. But definitely intrigued. Um, at, at Nick uh, Campbell in the 155 lightweight division here um, because there are – we know <clears throat> how many damn shows, uh, you know, do we did we have this year, Tim, where we thought, Jesus Christ, there's so many lightweights on this card. Yeah. Uh, the city of Nashville alone has been, uh, you know, bogged down with lightweights every time we, we go to that city for one reason or another. So there's lightweights. Uh, there's a plethora of them. Uh, that we have to make some really, really good matchups. And our main event, also in the lightweight division, uh, it was, man, like every pro fight was just right in that wheelhouse with it. Uh, Brant Cooper at a wild side moves to two and three with a first round knockout win over Shield Systems' Alex Riggs, who goes to three and four, three minutes, six seconds into this first round. Man, talk about a war. This was, this was going to be, I mean, talk about sending the crowd home with some excitement. This was wild. This was... Uh, just a rock of sock and robots for the entire time. And, you know, both guys dropped the other. Um, Riggs dropped Cooper kind of early. And that may have been ultimately what began to unravel the, the fight for him because uh, I talked to his coach, Ben Harrison, after, and, you know, Ben was like, you know, we should be able to beat this guy anywhere as long as you don't go in there and just start slugging with the guy in the pocket and train with him because he's bigger and he's stronger, you know, and, uh, you know, it's, it's it's obviously hindsight's twenty twenty, and you know we're armchair quarterbacking out here. But uh, when he when he dropped um, when he dropped Brent early early in the round, that kind of you know he started smelling blood in the water, and I think that's natural. Probably you know it's probably not easy to just like oh no, let's back off and, and be more measured. Uh, he, he smelled blood in the water. He went for the kill, and uh, and he just wasn't able to to get Brent to, to you know to fold. And Brent uh, started finding some some good uh, success of his own. And uh, ends up dropping Riggs, I think, a total of four times. And Riggs, every time, would just pop right back up. So it was like, man, can you stop it? Man, I can't really stop it. You pop right back up. But after the fourth time, uh, Luke Wilson did step in and stop that one. But, man, it had the crowd on their feet. Uh, neither guy had anything to hang their head over putting on a performance like that. That was just uh, was an outstanding way to close the night up. Yeah, I, for me, it was, you know, I was kind of up out of my chair uh, amongst the crowd during that one. And, uh, for me, the payoff was it was that Joe crowd that was coming in at the last fight because they're there for, um, you know, the club afterwards. Mm -hmm. And oh, that's a good thing so, to show them. Yeah. So they came in just to see that last little bit. And I heard so many comments just that, holy shit, next time I'm coming earlier, you know, yeah. like, this is what's going on. Yeah. Uh, that was a whirlwind of entertainment for the, uh, for the Joe people that were coming in afterwards and had no clue what they were walking into to, to see that. Um, so I think they definitely uh, helped. They were already earned us you know, earned some new fans, you know, because it was one of those deals where I think everyone, regardless of who they were there to see was entertained by that main event a hundred percent. But I think they also gained some of the casuals that were walking in just to get into the club early mm -hmm. uh, that we may see the next time in January uh, because of that fight. Um, yeah, I mean, what do you say? I mean, again, just straight entertainment, which is, you know, at the end of the day, I know these guys are trying to build a career, build a record, but at the end of the day, we're here to entertain, entertain the fans, entertain the crowd, um, and and they they fucking did that. Uh, what was the time on that fight? 3.06. 3.06, and three minutes and six seconds, they entertained, uh, you know, sometimes more than, than, than whole cards will at yeah. some point, but... Uh, um, you know, I, we definitely, you know, not to take anything away from anybody. At the end of the day, uh, these two guys had to step in there and, and swing, uh, 
four ounce fists at each other. Um, I would have liked to have seen, you know, what happened on weigh in day not happen again because I think it, you know, it does taint it a little bit. Mm. Um, you know, uh, Brant Cooper did come in overweight. Uh, Alex Riggs was not, you know, in a position where he wanted to step back and not compete and, and refund customers that and fans and friends that were there to see him. He wanted to, um, you know, step in there and, 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 you know, finish, finish the job, you know, uh, from a long training camp. Um, so, you know, I don't think it was ever in his mind not to fight, but it would have been a, a little nicer to have, you know, Brant make weight and not you know, have that little asterisk on, on the fight. Um, because otherwise it was, it was everything that we had hoped for. And listen, even with, you know, the records, uh, you know, three and three and, and, and one and three, when you posted this fight, when we posted this fight, man, I mean, we, I had locals here in Nashville just go, that's going to be a good one. They recognized, <laughs> right. they recognized that it was going to be a hell of a fight. They saw it. They saw through the records, knowing both guys and knowing what the game plan was going to be of Brank Cooper and, what he brought to the table and knowing where Alex is now and, and how, how much improved he's gotten it. It shows they knew when they saw this fight, this was going to be a hell of a fight and it definitely delivered uh, for everyone. That's going to do it. That's uh that's Aries 13 in the books. Uh, last take, Jeff, who's your biggest winner of the night? Who, who would you see, uh, you know, come out of there shining the brightest? There was, there was a few. And, and, and here's a little you know, interesting tidbit. I, uh, they, they didn't actually put uh, you know, carry um, action there on action 24-7 for the bets, but they did put I, uh, expectations, did put odds out, I guess, just for, for um, content. Shit and gigs. Yeah. yeah. Every single underdog hit. <clears throat> Every single one of the people they had lined as underdogs uh, was a winner. I, I would have disagreed with them lining Watson as the favorite, but the, otherwise uh, all the other three on paper uh, favorites uh, – lost so uh it might have been a good night for the books to be back uh back involved <laughs> yeah um but also if you know that it's not live betting i guess you can be just a little more frivolous in your, in yeah. your handicapping too That's if, you know true. You, if you know you don't have to uh back it up uh you know for me the takeaways of the night were uh blake grant and brendan sullivan i think blake grant in a debut um you know uh put his stock, you know, pretty high for a debut guy, uh, not just in his performance, but what, you know, what he brings to the table for, uh, for a promotion, you know, which is, uh, you know, being professional, being on time, being on weight, selling the show, selling the fight and bringing a crowd, all the things that a, a promoter looks for. And then on top of it all actually performed, you know, beautifully and walked away with a win. So, uh, Blake Grant and then, uh, Riven Sullivan for me again, uh, you know, the, the exclamation point that he put on that fight and in that uh, performance, um, I think, um, you know, help help skyrocket him closer to what I think his end goal is. And that's, you know, getting a, an amateur title fight, uh, getting those accolades, earning them and then going pro here probably in the next year or so. I got to agree with you on both of those. I'm going to toss in. um I'm going to toss in Nick Campbell here. Uh, just even even with the with the size advantage here, I think the the win over a prospect like Gilbride goes a long way for him, and it honestly just sets him up for more and more action in 2023. I think there's not going to be a shortage of of uh, really good fights for Nick Campbell out there. So I'm going to go with Nick Campbell. Uh, hey, appreciate you guys uh, sitting in with us for our recap for the final show 2022 for Aries. Uh, we'll be back here in the coming weeks getting ready for the uh, National Underground card. That is December the 17th. And um, we'll be, I'm sure we'll, we'll be, you know, doing all the breakdowns and all that good stuff here. So make sure you uh, like and subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we put new content up. We'll have fights going up uh, this week from Chattanooga Fight Night. Here in a couple weeks, we'll have uh, Aries 13 bouts up as well. So make sure you like and subscribe. Leave us a comment and uh, let us know who your uh, biggest winner was of the night. And uh, that's going to do it for another edition of the Zero Hour. For Jeff Hobbs, I'm Tim Loy, and we are signing off. We'll see you all next time.